Hi there, folks. This is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. And uh, love to everybody out there. I'm just going to be thinking about um, was Jesus a, a real historical figure? And uh, we've been discussing with some of the atheists on YouTube. And every fact that's been brought to them, they've kind of dis tried to dispute it. But you know, facts are facts. And it's no good trying to dispute with facts. And that's what I'm finding with quite a few of you atheists out there. When you're presented with facts, you do try to like to dodge it. So let's just read a few more facts. This is page 121 on um, on this book, uh, Joshua McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And it says, uh, on the historical historicity of Jesus, Lucian of Samosta, Greek satirist of the later half of the second century, Lucian spoke scornfully of Christ and the Christians, never assuming or arguing that they were unreal. As Lucian said, the Christians, you know, worship a man to this day, the distinguished personage who introduced their novel rites and was crucified on that account. You see, these misguided creatures started with the general conviction that they are moral for all time, which explains the contempt of death and voluntary self-devotion, which are so common among them, and then it was impressed on them by their original wargaver that they are all brothers for the moment that they are converted and deny the gods of Greece and worship the crucified sage and, af and live after his laws. All this they take quite on faith with the result that they despise all worldly goods alike regarding them merely on common property. Lucian, the death of per Peregrine. So what do you think of, of Lucian there? There's some more historical information. Are you going to twist it, atheist? Are you going to try and run round and try and deny that Christ existed? Try to say that he was a myth? It says, uh, Sutinius, uh, or Sotanius, another Roman historian, court official, under Hadrian, an analyst, analyst of the imperial house, stated in his life of Claudius, as the Jew... <laughs> yeah, I know what you're laughing at. I'm laughing at it as well. As the Jews were making constant disturbances at the investigation of Crestus, another spelling of Christus, he, Claudius, expelled them from Rome. Luke refers to this event in Acts 18, uh, verse 2, which took place in AD 49. In another work, Sotus or Sutus wrote about the fire that swept through Rome in AD 64 under the siege of Nero. Sotus or Sutus recounts the punishment by Nero was inflicted on the Christians a class of men given to a new and mischievous superstition. Assuming Jesus was crucified in the early 30s, Sustinius, no friend of Christianity, places Christians in the imperial city less than 20 years later, and he reports that they were suffering and dying for the conviction that Jesus Christ had really lived, died, and risen from the dead. So what do you think of that piece of evidence, atheist? Then we look at uh, Pliny the Younger, governor of Bithynia in Asia Minor, AD 112. Pliny was writing uh, the Emperor Trajan to seek counsel as to how to treat the Christians. He explained that he had been killing both men and women, boys and girls, and there were so many being put to death that he wondered if he would continue killing anyone who was discovered to be a Christian, or if he should kill only certain ones. He explained that he had made the Christians bow down to the statues of Trajan. Pliny goes on to say that he also made them curse Christ, which a genuine Christian cannot be induced to do. In the same letter, he says of the people being tried, they affirmed, however, that the whole of their guilt or their error was that they were in the habit of meeting on a certain day before it was light, which they sang in alternate verse a hymn of Christ as to God, and bound themselves to a solemn oath not to do any wicked deeds, but never to commit any fraud, theft, adultery, never to falsify their word, not to deny trust when they should be called upon to deliver it. So that's another piece of evidence. F.F. Bruce, check out F.F. Bruce, atheist. Google F.F. Bruce. I mean, here is a top world-class scholar. He was at Manchester uh, University. He's passed away now a few years ago. But top world-class... Uh, scholar says this the gospel account of the darkness which fell upon the land during Christ's crucifixion crucifixion was well known and required a naturalistic explanation from non-christians thallus did no doubt that G did 
not doubt that Jesus had been crucified and that an annual event had occurred in nature that required an explanation. What occupied his mind was coming up with a different interpretation. The basic facts were not called into question. So the basic facts of who Christ was in history was not questioned even by uh, those early Roman historians and writers. Another example, uh, Thallus, one of the first secular writers who mentioned Christ is Thallus, dated perhaps around AD 52. Thallus wrote a history of the Eastern Mediterranean world from the Trojan War to his own. Unfortunately his writings now exist only in fragments that have been cited by other writers. One such writer is Julius Africanus, a Christian who penned his work around AD 221. One very interesting passage relates to a comment by Thallus about the darkness that evoked the land during the late afternoon, late afternoon hours when Jesus died on the cross. As Africanus reports, Thallus in the third book of his histories explains away this darkness as an eclipse of the sun, unreasonably as it seems to me, unreasonably of course because a solar eclipse could not take place at the time of the full moon and it was at the season of the Pascal full moon that Christ died. Julius Africanus Chronography 8.1 This reference shows that the gospel account of the darkness fell upon the land during Christ's crucifixion was well known and required a naturalistic explanation from the non-Christians. Thallus did not doubt that Jesus had been crucified and that an annual event had occurred in nature that required an explanation. What occupied his mind was the task of coming up with a different interpretation. The basic facts were not called into question. It's getting pretty, pretty bad for you, atheists. You've got to admit the historicity of Jesus Christ. Do you admit, atheists, that Jesus Christ was a historical figure or not? Because the facts are quite clearly demonstrating that is the case. Next one is uh, Phaegon, or F-P-H-I-E-G-O-N. Uh, I'm a bit dyslexic, so that's why... Um, sorry, it's... P-L-E-G-O-N uh, Phlegon Another secular authority, Phlegon, wrote a history called Chronicles. While this work had been lost, Julius Africanus preserved a small fragment of it in his writings. Like Thallus, Phlegon confirms that darkness came upon the earth at Jesus' crucifixion, and he too explains it as the result of a scholar eclipse. During the time of the Tiberius Caesar, an eclipse of the sun occurred during the full moon. Africanus chronography. Aside from Africanus, Phlegon's reference to this event is also mentioned by the 3rd century Christian apologist Origen and the 6th century writer uh, Philippon. So what do you think of uh, Phlegon? I'll write these names down for you and give you some articles that you can go and read. So that's another piece of information atheist. What do you think of that? And then finally uh, Mara Bar uh, Saprion. Sarapion. Sometime after AD 70, Marabar Serapion, a Syrian and probably Stoic philosopher, wrote a letter from prison to his son, encountering him to pursue wisdom. In his letter he compares Jesus to the philosophers Socrates and Pythagoras. He writes, What advantage did the Athenians gain from putting Socrates to death? Famine plague came upon them and a judgment from their crime. What advantage did the men of Samos gain from burning Pythagoras? In a moment their land was covered with sand. What advantage did the Jews gain from executing their wise king? It was just after that their kingdom was abolished. God justly avenged these three wise men. The Athenians died of hunger. The Samians were overwhelmed by the sea and the Jews ruined and driven from their land, living complete dispersion. But Socrates did not die for good. He lived on his teaching for Plato. And Pythagoras did not die for good. He lived in the nature of, of Hera. Nor did the wise king die for good. He lived on in the teaching which he had given. This father was certainly not a Christian since he puts Jesus on equal footing with Socrates and Protagoras. He has Jesus living on his teaching rather than in his resurrection and in another place he indicates a belief in polytheism. Nonetheless his references to Christ indicate that he did not question whether Jesus lived or not. I think that's quite clear uh, quite clear and very very well it's just indisputable and strong evidence to say that uh, to, to, to establish that the historicity of Christ and 
I think for you atheists out there to deny that and to say that Christ was a mythological figure to me and I think to most reasonable people it's just not fair. So what do you think atheists? Let us know. Take care and God bless you.